All right. Hi, everybody, and welcome to uh, the Chaos Asia Pacific meeting, last one in June of 2021. It's good to see everybody. Um, let's see, the minutes are in the chat, but I will put them in again. So if you could please add yourself, that would be great. And so um, we have five things on the agenda today. And I'm glad that Yash is on too, um, can talk a little bit about his work with translations, but we'll start at the top. Um, so the Tencent biweekly meeting in Chinese, does somebody wanna tell us what this is? Yeah, we just have uh, one biweekly meeting the Chinese community last Sunday, and I have that recording now downloaded on my computer, and I wonder uh, where will we put this online? Um, because if we are going to upload it to YouTube, um, I think how, uh, how we should think, think, figure out a way uh, for me to transfer that video to Elizabeth or someone um, or another solution is, I'm not sure if you've heard Billy Billy, that's another video platform in China. And um, that's, uh, if you can look into that link, that's how all the meeting in our lab, that is X lab, how we, we upload all that recording to this website. I'm so okay with those. If you have it loaded to the website, they translate it for you. Is that the idea? Uh, or they subtitle it? No, they don't do that. Okay. So it looks like what Shoya was sharing, Sean, was a, just a, a video platform in China. So as opposed yeah. to doing it in YouTube, that we could just upload the Chinese videos to this different platform. Okay, all right, that, that makes sense. Um, can you, Shoya, do you know if you can do like channels on this platform like you can with YouTube? So could you make like a chaos organization or a chaos channel? Yes, I can create a, a new account on this platform uh, for chaos. That might be the easiest thing to do. And then we just, it's kind of like the black channel that's in Chinese. Um, Cause like, I'm guessing YouTube is not accessible in China. Yeah, without a VPN, it's not accessible. Okay, right. So maybe it wouldn't make too much sense for us to, like for you to do the recordings in China, give them to us, and then we post them on YouTube. And then folks in China can't even access those. So like maybe it would make more sense just to use a platform in China and we can kind of like the Slack channel, like. Um, just kind of put word out there that there's a, a Chinese channel. Okay. Yeah. That would okay. be great. That because that might be easier than two for the um, for the meetup, the Shanghai meetups. Like if any things are recorded there too. Yes, we can. Yeah, we can upload the materials of those meetups to this website too. Okay. I saw a plus one from Elizabeth. Does anybody else have comments on that? I uh, I agree. Yeah, I agree. And uh, I think Bilibili is quite popular in, in, in China and uh, even for the Apache Software Foundation, we, we create uh, a channel uh, account to host the, the, the documentary uh, video. And so, Make it much easier for the Chinese audience to look. Great. Uh, with, uh, videos. Yeah, we yeah we also make live cast uh, in the Bilibili. Uh, but so the Bilibili in China is like the Twitch, uh, where we can have live cast and uh, uh, upload the video and uh, do some fun scenes of fun. So a lot of people in China love this site. Awesome. I'm also thinking about uh, how about uh, any output we produced uh, in the last meeting. I mean, Xiaoya, uh, you and William 
and a lot of people together in, in the last weekend meeting, we have a lot of discussions around some topics. Maybe we can translate this uh, some output and uh, post it to somewhere, maybe in the slide or? Uh, yes, I can translate the meeting minutes. Um, I mean, we have that meeting minutes in Chinese. I can translate it, it into English and share it in Slack. Also. Yeah. I think we also discussed some topic that we would like to uh, maybe have some further discussion from other guys on um, through the uh, chaos slide. So is that way we, we also gonna do that? Uh, uh, I prefer to do that also because only only upload uh, radios uh, videos onto the onto the china uh, uh, some video platform it doesn't make sense for for foreigner guys <laughs> outside like saying like uh, might they don't understand I, uh, chinese quite a while i think oh. <laughs> uh. yes i can share a, an english version of the meeting minutes maybe every every time before this Asia Pacific meeting. Yes, yes, that's um, great. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Elizabeth, do you have thoughts like maybe, Shoya, could you, when, when you get the channel set up, could you put an issue in the participate page or the, um, the website repo? That's what yeah. I was thinking. It might be nice to have a little, just a little section. I don't, I don't know. I mean, it, it's kind of up to Kevin as well, but um, just a section of like the links to everything for the Chinese community, the Slack and the the uh, video channel, and um, you know, just everything that all the translations, if that's possible. I don't know, but I think it would be nice to have it kind of all in one place, like a tile, like one of those rectangles that we have. Exactly. Yeah, something like where, that. Where where should I put put it? on github or something or i'll show you uh, yeah actually i already submitted a pr to the part participate page but it have it hasn't been merged uh, yet um i i just added the set channel the link of that channel and link of that test mm. yeah that would be great uh, i see that Okay. Yeah, let me find that. Uh, Should we ping Kevin on that to yeah. merge? Is there anybody else that can merge that? In the conversation. Uh, oh, he's in there. Can you add the day of the week? Oh, you did it. Okay. Oh, nice. Oh, I think it's, it's merged. Oh, strange. I, I, that. <laughs> I just I just added or I just pinged Kevin in the PR. Oh, it should be like that. Okay, great. And then maybe I like that idea, Elizabeth, of having like a tile or whatever you call them in WordPress for um all the participation from china and kind of bringing all of them together that's a good idea okay. all right great and it, for what it's worth it looks like we can access that video platform here in the us so it's not gonna be <laughs> yeah. it looks like we can access it so awesome um, Agreed, and, and thanks, Shaya, for your, for your work here. Thanks. Uh, all right, anything else on that? Does that take care of everything that you need, Shaya? Does that? Yes. Okay. Yes, that's all. OK. Um, so now we're on to the Chaos Meetup on July 8th, which is coming up quickly. Yes, next week, uh, Thursday. Uh, it looks like we have set down everything on the schedule and we have uh, published our uh, announcement through the WeChat. And then we also in, uh, have collect, a collection, uh, collecting some uh, speakers' data and we are 
we are making an uh, electronic poster and uh, uh, we are gonna post uh, publish it uh, in in our second uh, broadcast or, or uh, advertisement if i could call it and uh, also uh, i have some discussion with uh, uh, this guy from Grim Lab, because uh, Vanu, Vanu, yep, Vanu. yeah, Vanu, yeah, and we have some discussion about the, the video he's gonna present during during that meetup. And I'm uh, asking if Matt and the thing if if you are ready, if your video is ready or not. Um, my video will be ready today. Okay, this is Sean. Awesome. Yep, that's great. Maybe. How about you, Matt? <laughs> uh, yeah, today. <laughs> today. Okay. <laughs> Honestly speaking, I also I'm only saying today because I, I promised it today, so that's why I have to say today. <laughs> then how about you, Matt? Yes, today also. I feel like a student sometimes, like I'm in class. <laughs> yeah, that's great. I'm in car. Let me go get it. <laughs> okay, that, that's uh, one. Could we, what was the best way to get this to you? Is it through SharePoint? I forget. Um, yeah, uh, maybe some slides and together with uh, with videos and uh, it would be great uh, if it would be ready uh, during this week and not, not have to be the today. I think we can give you some extra days to prepare for that. Which, which um, format is best? Um, do we put it on the SharePoint site? Um, I think yes. I'm not sure. Yes, so, yeah, do, you, do, do you think do you think we yeah. can access to there? Uh, yeah. Last time we talked about uh, Dropbox. Dropbox. I'm not sure okay. if that. Okay. That works for me. Yeah. So, Sean, could you make a Dropbox folder and share it with? Yeah. Yeah. And myself. Oh. Yep. And yeah, then I'll, um... So, yeah, could you set up a Dropbox folder and uh, Dropbox. share it with uh, Matt and say? Oh. Yeah, that would that probably be better than you would have control of it. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, that's great. Thank you, Shaya. Yeah, that's the things about Meetup. Uh, you know, we already send the schedules uh, to, to all of you through the Slack, and uh, we are going to pr uh, pr follow the schedule uh, we prepared. And uh, after that uh, Meetup, we will collect uh, all the output uh, include the uh, discussion output because we prepare a whole afternoon time for some topics discussion about uh, metrics about uh, metrics model. So that that's all for this for this for this item. Yeah. Uh, the next thing is um, yeah about this meetup. Any comments or suggestions from you guys? I just how many people do you expect at the meetup? Uh, we want to control the size of people. Uh, we, it uh, looks like we are going to prepare 30 seats for that, 20 to 30 seats for that. And then um, some of it, I'm sorry if you said this, but some of it will be recorded and posted, or is it uh, all just not recorded? It's either fine either way, I was just curious. Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna. Uh, we are gonna take some photos, of course, and uh, and uh, we are gonna uh, record not uh, through the video, but we are call, uh, write down the discussion result gotcha. uh, from the from the afternoon discussion because because that session we schedule are quite long. We prepare two se two sub sessions in the afternoon. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, that's it for this part. Uh, and the next thing is chaos translation. The things is that uh, uh, we have already finished the common part, risk part, and uh, and evolution part. We finished the whole the, the whole translation and the revisions, uh, and and um, we are waiting for some more uh, reviews from different peoples um, because we announced it uh, in, in our like a WeChat group, uh, China, China Chaos group, something like that. And um, and also uh, there are some guys, uh, 
a ongoing translating some uh, metrics in the value. So currently the progress is quite promising. So we think we can finish the whole things, everything, including translation and revisions before before the Septembers. And then we can catch up, catch up with uh, the progress uh, of the official release. So um, absolutely amazing. I didn't, I'll say thank you for the chaos meetup too. And th thank you for the translations. I want to make sure to get both of those thank yous in there. I do have a, a question on the translations. So uh, what, what's been the most challenging part in this process? You know, I create uh, an English and uh, Chinese comparable table. The reason I'm doing so is that uh, we are using some terms just in English as euro, as you, as you people, like issue, like uh, pull request, we don't translate in Chinese. That's the issue. We we don't have some common things on on, on those keywords. So we are think we are, we are talk we are discuss something about that. Do we need to keep it as an English word, like some keywords like issue or pull request, or we do we have to translate in Chinese uh, at all? I, so I think for issue and pull request, if if obviously. I'm assuming you still have those things. There's just not called those things in Chinese, right? Yes. So call them the yes, things sir. that Chinese people will understand, I think, is the answer. Mm -hmm. OK. <clears throat> because, for example, in the, in the evolution working group, we created a metric called merge request, which is a general term that applies across three different platforms that in, in any platform many of which don't call it a merge request. So it's the same thing. You should use the term for issue and mm -hmm. pull request that, that translate into what that thing is in your regular use mm -hmm. in, Chinese, in China. Uh -huh. Yeah, mm, that's a good idea. And also there are some, some sentence that, um, you know, uh, as our euro work, um, we look uh, so many English documentations, we already get familiar with way of reading that English, but uh, we don't really do that before trans have to translate in Chinese. So that's the similar stuff like uh, we discuss like issue or pull request. Um, what I mean is that uh, like uh, OSPO, uh, open source program office, if we translate into the Chinese, no matter which words in Chinese, it's it's kind of weird, you know? Okay. So, so we have to get, because so far we have, we I noticed that there is a survey from To Do Group. They have some survey in, and in Chinese, in English, in Japanese, but we are doing this to do survey in Chinese. I totally don't understand what they are talking about. That's the problem. I know so it's a bad, yeah. yeah. It's a bad translation, sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> so is, so uh, is the survey not understood yeah. in Chinese? That's interesting because there is a member of the to do group on this call. <laughs> on the... So I communicate with the, the guy from, from to do group. To, to, to tell them this question. For example, it's also including some typos like uh, 10 plus. They trans actually, this should mean more than 10 people, but uh, they translate as uh, more older than 10 years old. <laughs> That's so a big difference. How, how could we understand this? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so that's a problem. So I, I, I have already uh, contact with, with the guy who, who managed those things and uh, helped him to, to refresh the whole translations. And I just using this example to say there's some gap between the Chinese and English, especially in, in open source, these areas. Yeah, that's the thing. I, I assume you're working with maybe Chris Anacek? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay, perfect. Mm. 
Yeah, that, that's the translation part I want to discuss today. And the next day is about the pull request. I create uh, like uh, two, one weeks ago. It's also related to the translation. We are doing the translation. I have reading every single word in English. For example, evolution, this uh, some metrics. I noticed that uh, maybe you can open up, Matt. Yes, and I'll share my screen too. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, if you, yeah, I, I try, I change some keyword, the proxy to the dimension. Uh, because uh, when we use keywords, a uh, proxy to in some uh, sentence, it's kind of hard for me. Uh, you know, I, I know I'm a, not a native English speaker. So it's kind of hard for me to understand the whole sentence. But when I translate uh, instead of keyword, a proxy, but I replace it with dimension, I could understand what it means. So, so I'm asking if it's possible to, to, to change that. I have some feedback from Kevin, this guy. Like a word like other than proxy? Like if yeah. we could, because there are other words we could use that. Um, Maybe you can. Uh, yeah, I can. I can look at. Is it which work? Is it which working group needs to have that word removed from uh, it? Evolution. Okay, I can. I can search evolution and get rid of the word proxy and replace it with some, some yeah. less specialized word. I guess I'd call it. Yeah, uh, I pre I would appreciate. Maybe you could even just like spell it out, Sean. You know what I mean? Yeah, I was. Yeah, I was thinking of like looking at each context that we use it in and just using different words to explain what's what what it means. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh huh. Okay, thank you. So, Sean, are you? Yeah, I've got that to do item. Okay. I'll, I'll take care of that for both evolution and risk. I, I both evolution and risk. I help coordinate, so I can make I can remove proxy and if there's any other words like proxy that you run across um feel free to uh, put them in slack under the is there a translation channel or where would we ask for those words in slack maybe just an issue or, yeah just create an issue that's another great way to do it yeah thank you yep and uh, that's it and the the, the last thing it's uh actually is coming from the last discussion we had uh, during the meeting. And we are discussing something about uh, something about uh, a metrics model. Uh, we want to, so today we, after discussion, discussed with, uh, with King Gao and uh, Clement. So we want to uh, uh, bring here some of our thinkings about a metrics model in chaos. So I prepare some slides. So okay, I will make you host and then you can share thank your screen. Thank you. Okay, you're good. Okay, thank you. It's quite simple, just the two pages. First is just uh, some summarize, the reason we are thinking about uh, to creating the metrics in chaos. I don't sure see uh, your screen yet, if you are sharing it. Not yet. No. Is, does anybody else see it? Share. No, no. Okay, no. I for, sorry, I forgot to sh to click that share button. It's working now. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. So, quite simple. First, the page is about uh, the summary about how why do we think of this creating the matrix model? Basically, two points: uh, establish logic relations among metrics, even cross working groups. So those metrics, I, I mean, those metrics de defined in uh, in chaos is quite amazing, uh, quite good, and uh, they have clear definitions, goals, and the way of implement and some reference documentations. It's quite good, but for us, we want to pu put it in the practice. As you know, we want to use those metrics to collect in the data and to analysis based on these metrics. But we have some problem about that. 
So first is that, uh, uh, it's that's this one matrix. It, it is not isolated with each other. They always have some connections. So those uh, metrics are coming from some summary of practice, um, as we are already know, but finally we want to um, put it back to the practice finally. Uh, when we gonna real, uh, use it in, in real practice. The second thing we are thinking about, uh, the reason we wanna create the different metrics model for different purpose to help our different community teams to focus their areas. Because in community, we have different teams, like um, we have development teams, we have teams to focus on the operations and governance, or even the infrastructure. The different teams, they have uh, their own focus areas. So that's why we want to set up some metrics models to help them focus their areas. Because if we want to just uh, create a group of metrics and uh, collecting those data uh, and uh, getting the results in front of them, they don't understand what they are mean for their work. Yeah, so, I, th uh, I think that's a great idea, identifying sets of metrics for different job roles. Yeah. So that's the real problem we met in the in, in recent, I mean, in the last several months, we, we are doing using the chaos metrics. We are collecting data uh, using chaos metrics. And uh, after we got in this data, get this data and um, to to introduce the result to the different teams, they always have their problem to understand the, what does they mean. Is it really useful for my team? That's the question for us, our problem for us. So based on uh, uh, this, those thinkings, and uh, we f we create um, uh, first we create a, a development metric model in chaos. If you say that it's a really typical development process or flows from the new issue and through the fork branch or fork or branch and to the PR handling, finally PR closed. And if the PR closed, PR related to an issue and it's the issue would be closed. So in each of single in each of single component it's action or event related to the uh, development uh, phases. For example, first, it's always start from new issue. And uh, under this new issue event or stages, we have several metrics related to these actions, like uh, metrics from evolutions, from risk, from common. And this common, I use some simple word, word, word here. I just uh, uh, put it here, type of contributions, who, means contributions, contribution locations, and the diversity, and when. Sorry, it, if we, um, sorry, if we, can, can you play the PPT? The word is so small. Sorry? Can you play the PPT? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. The word is small, okay. Yeah. And uh, after this new issue, so we, <clears throat> we, all right, we always uh, to notice that uh, things about issue response. Then it's related to the evolutions, comments, something like that, like uh, uh, issue response time and the time to first response to is to this issue. And this is not an um, event or, or actions, this is just a state. That means this issue here, it's still opened before it closed. So we will gonna measure if this issue is active in some period or how long of this issue is still opened. So if this issue is related to a requirement or bug, it's uh, referred to a, a, a code commit. So we will fork uh, to, to our own count and create a local branch and commit uh, writing some code. So this action will refer to some several metrics like common part, technical fork, evolution, branch life cycle, and also for some common metrics, something like this. And after we add this commit, and this commit will trigger a new PR. 
or new pull request or change request. So this new change request will really due to several uh, metrics like uh, what I'm writing here, evolution, risk, and some common common things. And uh, yeah, so I marked this part as blue because it, it say I build it's um, yes it's a part of development uh, process but it's different from uh, from from PR handling it's a, it's a from my understanding it's a, it's a kind of independent independent component in the whole development process so I mark it as blue. So it's referred to some risk metrics like task coverage and the license and the security things, something like that. Also, the things included into the best practice badge, uh, for example, static or, or, or dynamic code uh, analysis, something like that. And after set build passed, uh, it's uh, going to step into the PR review this uh, uh, content. So it's also for several metrics, because those PR review would gonna happen. Some uh, I have some comments. Yeah, you'd better re re refresh your code. So I create this uh, <coughs> arrows to set up this uh, cycles uh, with this commit. So after whole things is done, uh, the PR could be merged or declined finally. So during the merge or uh, Decline these two scenarios, it's referred to different metrics like what I'm writing here evolution path, change request accept, durations, code changes, and also this risk led to the business risk. Uh, what I'm writing here bus factor and the elephant factor. These two factors is related to the code commit part. Also, we have also the business risk here, it's referred to the PR related to stuff. And finally, the PR closed. We have some metrics like uh, uh, acceptance ratio. So I, I, what I mentioned, if this PR always uh, refer to an issue, this PR closed action will trigger the issue is closed finally. So that's the uh, mm, some example thing we want to introduce uh, about this metric model, especially for this development uh, process. So. So any ideas, any comments? So this is amazing. <laughs> That's my first comment. So thank you for, so we, we've been kind of struggling, I think in the chaos project about how to think through exactly what you're just doing right here. Like how we can draw together metrics that live in different working groups in ways that are meaningful and impactful for the work that people are doing within organizations. Um, so this is a, it, this makes a lot of sense to me. And I think it, I'm, I'm curious, like from Sean, your work with organizations and drawing together different metrics and also Don, your work at VMware, like, is this, does this resonate with how you would think about drawing metrics together? My experience is, um, every organization has a group of metrics they like to see together and the you know i've never gone through and thought about it metric by metric what goes together but what i saw looked reasonably logical to me and i'd love to get a copy of it and see about putting together some auger endpoints that collect all of those met all the metrics that are grouped together just to see um, what kind of utility we can derive from that for people. Yeah, and I would say, I mean, from, from a VMware perspective, I don't know that we necessarily group the metrics together, but we do, we do encourage people to think about the metrics from a more holistic standpoint. So it's not, you know, it's not just one's good, one's bad. You know, how do you interpret all of this, all of this stuff together? So, I mean, that's, that's kind of how I think about it from a VMware standpoint. But I know that this conversation has come up a bunch of times in common because especially with the common working group, a lot of our metrics um, have really close ties to metrics and other, 
other working groups, and we we do need to find a, a better way to a better way to do that. So I think this is I think this is a really great start. Yeah, because I think it's um it's amazing things done by by chaos community that they abstract uh, some metrics on as a best practice ways from the real practice. We uh, we could understand okay. Uh, where these metrics come from and why do we need to mirror these metrics and uh, to let people get familiar with uh, all those metrics used in the community healthy track. But uh, after we um, we come back to say, okay, this metrics is meaningful for us and we are gonna use that in practice in our uh, real pro development process or, or community measurement. So we found that um, we cannot rely on those working groups as our uh, some models. For example, I use values model, uh, values working groups metrics as a model. No, it's not going to work because the metrics from even from the different working groups, they have some logic connections with each other. We have to pick up the different metrics from different working group and put them together and uh, to achieve some goals for example, to, to mirror the development process or to mirror the, the governance uh, uh, perspective, something like that. Yeah, I, I know I, I recognize in my own experience that I, I don't really look at the working group that built the metric when I'm putting together reports with people. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's kind of what you're saying, that the way we built them in these groups isn't necessarily the way people will consume them. So I'm, so I'm thinking of that, is it possible to, for, com, for, for chaos community, that we provide some typical uh, metric model, if we call, call it like a model, uh, and told people, okay, here is uh, all the metrics we, we we can provide, and also we provide some thinking, like uh, to guide, to guide something like guideline to tell you how to use that in in practice. So, for example, if you more care about the the pro, uh, development process, and uh, maybe you can put this group of metrics uh, as model, uh, a, a, to utilize into your uh, work, into your work. So yes, yeah. I've been taking notes. Yes, I, I was just going to agree and, and say again, when I get a copy of this, I'll start building like metric endpoints to bring these together for people in a single view and just to see what what people think of it. Yeah, that would be great, I think. And also this, some, some topic metric models could be, would be trigger more thinkings because uh, you know when I'm doing some front front end uh, implementations, we found uh, a similar work or similar way of working. Um, like D three uh, libraries, they produce so many models to tell you how to use their libraries. So we can think of our metrics as a matrix library. And uh, if you're gonna use it in best practice, okay, we can give you some good example. We are thinking of that. And uh, you, you can based on those examples tr to trigger more usage and utilizations in your practice. So that's our thinking. So I have a few comments on that. So one of the reasons that I really like this or any such model, um, is that yes, it, it draws together metrics that live in otherwise sometimes different working groups that should be drawn together in, in meaningful ways around work. Um, I think it, the model also remains, um, I don't know how well this word will translate, but it remains agnostic. So there's, there's no value necessarily ascribed in the model. Like how the model is understood is still going to require context from the organization, right? Exactly. So 
Yeah. So part of, and that's great because part of one of the things we do in the chaos project is our metrics. I think Don had mentioned this, like they're not good or bad. They have different meaning in different contexts. Right. Yes. Yeah. So this helps people kind of locate those metrics even better than we have done while still remaining neutral, which yeah. is, which is really good. Um, and it, yeah. 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 Also, we, we have a lot of discussion about the diversity and the inclusion, this part, uh, uh, metrics also. And uh, I think we all we all agree that this part of work is quite important for, for us, even in China communities. But, uh, but how to use that? Is it some difference from other communities outside, I mean, outside China compared with the uh, US and the uh, European uh, mm -hmm. countries? We are thinking of that. So maybe we, we we need uh, mm, to reorg some metrics into our thinkings or into our um, practice to utilize these metrics. That's the, yeah, that's the one thing. Yeah. It does. Um, one, of, one of the other things that you had said too is that this is maybe just kind of starting to dawn on me in the last like couple months that um, the metrics or the, um, what you're calling the tactical metric model, like mm -hmm. a lot of it is inspirational like, or, or motivational. Like some of the metrics, right? They, they can provide numbers, but they can also open up new ways of thinking mm -hmm. about how work is done and how you understand work. So I, I really do think this model helps in that regard too. Yeah, um, I also listen up the, the chaos podcast last uh, video from the orbit model you know <clears throat> orbit model they have some dedicated model called orbit but th i'm thinking that in chaos we have more efficient i mean more metrics we can choose we can choose the different kind of models to make it suitable for different scenarios instead of only one model so exactly yes um, Sean, you had put a few comments in. Did you want to speak to those? Um, I, I just said that I don't know when I got cut off, but I'll build a few of the models um, in Augur as visualization endpoints, and we can see how how people find them in terms of usefulness. And usually, the when first time you show somebody something, they have an idea on what else they want. So I think it's a good process just to start showing people metrics in these model groupings um, to see what, what they think. And I'll make a kind of a last comment on this. I, Elizabeth, are you on right now? So, I am. So maybe could we, I, it would be great to bring this because next chaos community meeting, like the, the one on Tuesdays, is um, the monthly meeting. And maybe we could bring this to the monthly meeting as well and just kind of get people's reaction. Yeah, so that's, that's great. That would be awesome. And so can okay. you can can you share the slide deck? Of course, I, I, I could. Uh, how can I send you? Uh, through, through the mail or? I can send all of you, of course, <laughs> but I don't know how through the mail. Uh, I, I think you can share Dropbox. the box. Uh, yeah, Dropbox or, or, or just uh, Google Doc. Uh, okay. So yeah. I can I can put it on the Google Google Doc and send uh, to you through the Slack. Uh, by you, link. Could, you could almost just put it put a link in the minutes here. Okay, of course it. I can do that. Yes, yes. And then maybe a last last question before we, we wrap up, but like, so this is an amazing work. So how, like kind of the ongoing question, like how can we can we help? Is the, is the next step that we can help here bringing it to the monthly meeting and then yeah. bringing feedback back, back here? Would that be the next step here? Yeah, that would be great. So, you know, Asian pie, 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 what, what what's that? How to call this meeting? AP meeting, Asia Pacific yeah, meeting. <laughs> okay, this is the bridge. This is the bridge. Like I, I treated as bridge uh, with, with, with our 
uh, international communities. So I would like to hear your uh, hear the feedback from from the monthly meeting, and we can continue to say, okay, uh, if there any way forward of the meeting, uh, if there there was something, we can we can do it together. I think. And then Elizabeth, I'm thinking we might want to like we have to talk to to Kevin because I, th I think these types of models are going to be important in 2021, 2022, like how we draw these together in meaningful ways. Like how do we present this to people without like, having to be on these calls, <laughs> right? That's, that's the challenge is how do you visually, um, you know, display this information in a, in a clear and concise way that makes sense. Um, we've we've struggled with that a lot. I think <laughs> a lot of things. <laughs> maybe it's maybe it's something that I mean. Obviously, Grimoire Lab and Augur both have products that build visualizations and pages and things. So, I think you know my thought with Augur was I would just build a visualization endpoint that you can point at that just gives you all all of the analysis for some default time period for some default re for some repo that you specify. Um, and just let people look at it for repos they care about. Um, that, that's the first thought I had. I don't know if that's the right approach, but it's one. I think Matt, it, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I think you're also um, wondering how we, we display this on the website in a conceptual way. It would be like, hey, I know we have like over in the next year, right? I mean, as we approach 100 metrics and we have the slash metrics page, that, that's completely overwhelming to a lot of people, right? Like you can't just say, here's here's a list of 100 metrics. Go have, have a blast. Um, and so like, how do we start providing? Because this is these are filters on that set of metrics. And so how do we present these filters or these ways of visualization in a very meaningful and upfront way to people when they come to the website. And so we just have to think through that. I, I just have an idea, uh, just like a, a quick start uh, to give people uh, five minutes to know the most important um, metrics uh, if they are interested in uh, on certain areas. So, 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 so maybe uh, in a couple of uh, months, we just need to uh, take take a look at that, and uh, I uh, in last uh, 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 last week meeting uh, 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 we talking in a ten cent meet. Uh, uh, it's like uh, um, chaos provides us uh, like a, a supermarket. If we want to cook a certain kind of meal, we. I just want to do some things. We we need to pick up the the, the metrics. We need to uh, so the metrics could be a, a in a, a great uh, integrate uh, um, for 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 us to 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 consume. So 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 I'm 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 still thinking. And uh, maybe we we can give the people a, a, a quick choice or or, or some uh, menu to 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 help them to. Uh, uh, get to know what, what kind of metric uh, they may need. I'm probably not alone, but I love the metaphor of a metric supermarket. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely love it. So. <laughs> yeah, right. last meeting we discussed about the metrics. We, it, it describes the metrics is the uh, orange material and uh, the, the consumer who want to, for example, he want to uh, make the barbecue, make hot top, make the India food, American food, Chinese food. Uh, this is requirement, it's value of the metrics. So we must uh, use the model to link the different uh, uh, different kinds of metrics uh, together and then make the food, yeah. That's, it's, per, it's got like, metric supermarket has <laughs> top title written all over it. <laughs> <laughs> That is wonderful. All right. Well, we're at we're we're at time. Um, as always, you're all amazing, and I learn a lot <laughs> in these fifty minutes. So thank you so much for all of your very thoughtful comments and your thoughtful work. They're really amazing. Okay.
So I will share my uh, my slides through the Google link and, and touch it on the on the on this documentation. Wonderful. Thank you, everybody. It's great to see all of you. Thank you. See you next time. Thank you. See you, see you next time. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 bye.